Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In my previous video, I had covered how we can create our first simple linear regression model in Excel. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to take a look at that. And I also made another video on multiple regression model in Excel. In today's video, I'm going to be covering how we can tie the two together and how we can transition from a simple linear regression model to a multiple regression model and what are the different factors we should consider when, when doing so. But before we dive right into it, not forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest of data analytics in Excel, Python, Pandas, and Power Query, and other technologies as well. So let's get right into it. So let's do a quick re a recap from the last video. We had seen a small data set, which is the cars data set, okay, which has the, we wanted to predict what is the relationship of the miles per gallon, and with, this, is the, uh, this is the target variable, and these are the independent variables or the predictors. And we did quite well. We then created our training and test data set. Okay. And we did some exploratory analysis on the, on the target variable and the independent variable. And then we created our first model, which, uh, and we, and we saw the multiple R square, R square, which has an, uh, a 0.884, meaning 84% of the Y variable can be explained by the X variable. We saw some other key, you know, concepts. We like the residues and the, and the line plot. And we also saw how we improve the model by removing some of the outliers. And today's video we're going to see is how we can transition from a simple linear regression model to a multiple regression model. So first, what is a multiple regression model? A simple linear regression model considers only one variable, that is one target variable, and one predictor or one independent variable. Meaning, we want to predict something based on only one single variable. So in this case, we want to predict what is the miles per gallon if I know the displacement and we did a very good job in that. Now, if you look at the data set, there may be multiple variables and these variables are also called as features, okay, meaning you can add different features which may actually improve your model. So, I may want to predict what is the miles per gallon based on displacement and horsepower or displacement horsepower and cylinder or displacement horsepower and gear. So, these are called how we use different features and sometimes we also create more features which is called as feature engineering. So here we want to extract certain features and we want to see how our model behaves when we add more features to the model. So when we add more than one feature to predict the y variable or the, or, or the target variable, that is what we call as multiple regression because you are using multiple input variables or predictor variables to predict the independent variable or the target variable. Okay, so now we have got this concept clear. Now let's take a look at how we can do this. So let's say I'm going to take another variable. For uh, this example, let's say I'm going to take horsepower. So I'll do control shift down, select this, and here I'm just going to paste the horsepower. Again, I'm not doing tra uh, train test split for this example. I just want to show you how you can build the model, a multiple regression model, and how you can transition from a simple linear regression model to a multiple regression model. So now let's go to our data tab and again select on data analysis. Okay. So now in this case, it remains the same. So I'm just going to select regression. Here our Y variable will remain the same. That means the target variable will remain, uh, will remain the same. I want to predict the miles per gallon. And now the X variable is going to be a combination of displacement and, and horsepower. Meaning I want to predict miles per gallon as a function of displacement and horsepower. So I'm going to, uh, this I'm going to keep it in the, in the same model in a worksheet so that I can compare it how, uh, versus my simple linear regression model. So let me paste it below. Okay. And I'm going to, yeah, rest I'm going to remove for now so that we can just see the, you know, model. Let's click on okay. Okay. It contains non-numeric data. Okay, I need to select the labels and now click on OK. All right. So here we have got our multiple regression model. So we have now transitioned from a simple linear regression model to a multiple regression model. However, one thing to note that in our simple linear regression model, one metric we were using to judge how good the model was called the multiple R. So we were checking multiple R here. That means 86% as we discussed of the Y variable in this case, the MPG can be explained by the X variable, which was displacement. 
but now in the multiple regression we since it's multiple regression we have where we have considered multiple uh, multiple a predictor or dependent variables we need to consider the adjusted r r squared we cannot consider multiple r so we need to consider this value so now in this case how we interpret this is that 0.73 that means 73% of the variance in miles per gallon can be explained as a function of displacement and horsepower okay so you can see our model now the the fit has you know reduced from 86 in a simple integration model to 73 so the fit is less but we have considered another parameter let's just take a look at the you know p value again as we discussed this is to refute the null hypothesis so that means anything less than 0.05 means it is statistically sig significant so displacement has predictive power horsepower also is less than 0.05 so it has predictive power so both these variables are good enough for predicting miles per gallon okay so again the, these are the coefficients this is the coefficient and these two are the different coefficients for displacement and you know horsepower right so now you can use this and you, you can predict how about to note that we we note that the r squared here is you know 73 that means the variability can be uh, that can be explained by the y variable with the x variables has decreased as compared to your simple linear regression model so let's take a look at probably one of the reasons why could that be i mean the reason you want to go for multiple regression is probably can i improve the model if i have more features and in any machine learning case when i am when i extract better features when i engineer features the goal is to have a better a uh, better way of predicting i mean the, i mean the, i mean the model should closely fit the uh, data should generalize the data without overfitting but let's see in this case so in this case let us go back to the da data tab okay so let us do something okay and see and find a uh, you know possible explanation uh, so i'm going to select all let me select all okay let me go to the data tab and let me click on data analysis and let's click on something called as correlation okay let us see where it is uh, correlation click on okay okay labels as first row and the output i'm going to place it in the same sheet so we can see and click on okay okay i need to select the input range so i'm going to click here click here okay and let's click on okay and here you can see this is called my correlation matrix so this shows the correlation between each variable with the other variable okay so you can see my the, the one is showing for uh, for the variable correlated uh, related to each other so miles per gallon with miles per gallon obviously the correlation will be one because it's strongest and a, a negative number means it is negatively or inversely correlated and a positive number is positively correlated so we can see miles per gallon and displacement has a strong negative correlation as we have seen as the displacement increases the miles per gallon or the mileage we get decreases right we can we have, we have done that year okay as it, as the displacement increases the mileage that we get or the miles per gallon decreases so it is quite evident here and we can see we have taken horsepower also and horsepower also is uh, is inversely or negatively correlated with miles per gallon but let us take a look at the relationship between displacement and horsepower so displacement and horsepower we can see are both positively correlated with each other so all the variables that are strongly correlated with each other the features are probably are not a good option to include in your uh, when adding new features to your model because they represent the same variability so if if uh, displacement is strongly correlated with miles per gallon and uh, and displacement and and horsepower are both strongly correlated with each other that means i am representing the same information in the model so i'm not going to get any other value and you can see this is the case for most of the variables they look to be strongly correlated with each other except you can see for example displacement with am or displacement with uh, with gear it, uh, the correlation is little less or displacement with with car so the uh, correlation is is a little bit less so probably this variable would be a better uh, addition rather than you know taking you know horsepower okay so you can try that and you can experiment and see which gives you a, a better relation but the but the variables which are strongly correlated should not be generally Uh, included in your model unless there's a confounding variable now you ask what's a confounding variable okay a confounding variable can be something like that where we try to build a correlation say we try to build a correlation that uh, we uh, we try to examine a correlation that when it's uh, when people are are eating ice cream there are many shark attacks at the beach so logically it may seem incorrect right that there should be no correlation between eating ice cream and a and a shark attack 
but there could be a confounding variable for example when it is hot people tend to buy more ice cream and when and they also tend to go into the beach to you know cool down and which may relate to a shark attack because more people are swimming right so if unless there's a confounding variable it's not a good practice to include the variables which are strongly correlated with each other so in this case probably our simple linear regression model would be a better fit okay rather than the uh, rather than the multiple regression model so it's not always a good case to move into multiple features you can you have to choose the algorithm that is best for your data and and engineer the best quality of you know data so uh, so, so be careful and always ensure to to validate your assumptions with the domain expert so for example as i said here it is showing me that there's, there's a strong correlation between miles per gallon and displacement hence i have taken that in the model okay but maybe the experts say that no we need to use cylinders or we need to use some other you know variables which are very important so then we need to include them in the model to give a more realistic prediction of your independent variable in a model okay so i hope you have you have understood this if you want if you have not understood or you want me to make Uh, some videos on any other concept that, that I've talked about here in detail. Do let me know, and not forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest of data analytics across different technologies. Stay tuned. Do leave a like and a comment on my video. Thank you.